Hello, Akshay. Hey, hi, Dave. How are you? Oops, I, uh, you might be muted. Oh, sorry. Am I audible now? Hey, yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. Good morning. How are you? Hey, pretty good. Thanks. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Doing good. Good, good. So, unfortunately, I was jumping on here a little early. I saw you jumped on. I will not be able to hang out for the entire call today. And honestly, I don't know that we'll need the whole hour anyway. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of kick us off and then we'll go from there. And we've actually brought in, you know, we asked for this kind of second interview to include uh, another person from our space that has some Tableau background and kind of building reports and, and thought we would kind of go through just a kind of final walkthrough here to, to kind of mm-hmm. kind of get her opinion and kind of gauge your, your knowledge and understanding of Tableau. Because frankly, from my side, I've never used it really. And uh, I think from the noob side, he hadn't either. So we weren't really able to dig into it. And it'll, you know, this role will kind of involve quite a bit of Tableau kind of build outs and integration. But Hey, good morning, Mari. Good morning. How's How are everyone? you? Doing well. How's everyone else doing? Yeah, pretty good, thanks. Yeah, I'm in. Hey, so I was, I was just kind of talking actually too. I'm not, I, unfortunately, I've got uh, double booked for this. So I was just going to kind of jump in here and, and kick us off. And then I'm going to have to drop over to uh, another call. But um, I think... You know, for the purpose of this kind of interview, I think uh, you and the news can kind of get through what we had talked about uh, last week. And I was kind of filling actually in on on just kind of the second interview kind of before you guys had jumped on. So this is really to kind of focus a little bit more specifically around um, kind of knowledge around Tableau and experience with Tableau, kind of what kind of reports have been built and, you know, just kind of digging into that tool a little bit more than what we did during the last interview. Okay, well, how about just to get us kicked off, um, Mari, do you maybe want to just kind of run through a quick introduction and talk a little bit about yourself? And then actually you could probably do the same after that, right, since Mari wasn't on the, the first interview. And then I think from there we can kind of dive into it if that works. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. So, um, so my name is Mari Nakayoshi. Uh, I've been with Cardinal Health for probably around nine months now. So I'm pretty new to the company, but I've been working with Tableau for around 15, 16 years um, doing database. So I have a long uh, history with database and Tableau, just new at Cardinal. Um, so I'm the uh, well, I was a senior data visualization engineer, but we recently had a bunch of title changes, so now I'm just called the data analyst. But essentially, I just do uh, data biz. Um, I'm working with uh, the inventory management uh, to just deliver a lot of the machine learning results um, via Tableau. And doing some descriptive, but it's also trying to get into some machine learning um, because that's really where the next phase is, the next step is. And so that's been my interest um, and excitement at being here and working with the Augmentel team in Pharma. Okay. That's the quick Mari story. Turning it over to you. Yeah, actually, you want to just run through a kind of quick intro and, and just give Mari uh, an idea of your background? Yeah, 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 sure. So, hi, Mary. Actually, this side. So, I have around five years of total experience in the IT and uh, initial one and a half year, I worked in the telecom and networking domain where I used to fix the network related issues and on day to day basis, I used to communicate with in customers for resolving their network related queries and issues. And uh, on the top of it, I used to create the uh, ad hoc reports for internal case management purpose to improve the process. So, at that time, I I used to work on a SQL tool to to you know, retrieve the different data and all that thing. So later on, I started working as a data analyst. Uh, it's been now three years. So here I I used to communicate with the different stakeholder for the uh, for the people from the financial background, and uh, the I probably used to work with the sales team to fix the fix the issues related to data. Basically, they used to you know run their enterprise agreement with their in customer. So whenever they feel uh, there is an issue in the customer data, they used to 
uh, raise a request with us like uh, we have a customer like and we need some historical purchase of this particular customer so that we can offer them a waiter so that you no know, to get a good hold on that customer for long time so i i used to do a basic validation of the customer like uh, what kind of data they want and uh, based on that i used to you know write a sql query to retrieve the data and uh, later on i used to work with the stakeholders for the validation purpose like whatever data i had retrieved it is uh, accurate or not or this is something the same what they are expecting or is there any some you no know, some missing data is present over there so after the validation i i prepare the ad hoc report in excel where the sales team can quickly go through like oh, who is the customer and what is the historical purchase of that particular customer and uh, like in current situation how much devices or licenses they are consuming and in future uh, what will be the invoice for that particular customer if we offer or if we create a new order for that customer then how much credit that needs to be go from our end to customer account or vice versa like in addition customer like how much they have to pay us to settle down the bill so once that ad hoc report is confirmed and order is booked so i i used to create a basic tableau report for that particular customer where the sales team or you know business representative can quickly help customer to give a presentation a quick presentation where customer can see the total or uh, devices has been purchased across the year how much devices has are purchased in each quarter and uh, under each quarter what kind of different licenses has been purchased and out of that licenses how much licenses are been utilized and how much licenses are still pending in the warehouse so that kind of statistic they can quickly you know go through and uh, yeah once that part is done then they they book the order and later on uh i used to share that dashboard on the tableau server where they can proceed further with the further communication of further process so in the nutshell i had done this so for the tableau and sql like i had worked around 2 uh, years so uh that is a part of the project in in company i had done but uh, on the top of it i had done around uh, 40 dashboards as a capstone project as a part of learning and and that's it okay I, i'm i'm sorry did you just say you developed around 40 dashboards for i i didn't quite catch uh, what as a, is as a part of learning like the tableau tool was new for me so i started learning it and while learning i used to create a separate ad hoc dashboard as as a part of learning like a capstone project type and uh, i had published that to the my tableau public profile so it okay. is not high level or high end dashboard but the water i learn i try to explore on my own way okay thank you for clarifying that so i think we had mentioned it, and i'm not sure if this was kind of relayed over to you arkshay but would would you by chance have some examples of some of the dashboards that you've that you put together that you'd be able to share with us and uh, just kind of walk through yeah. them really quickly I have now uh, let me log into my tableau public uh, okay as I say let me and I'll make you a presenter here as well um so I'll do that as your mm -hmm. login in here and this is always a little strange so bear with me give me a second I think you log in and share my screen okay so I've are you uh while 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 uh, tim is doing that um the intent for akshay's role is essentially to whatever data sets we are creating for the unfilled units were extreme right for uh, which is responsible for identifying the new quote and quote root causes right um to to be able to present that as an operational dashboard which i believe will be part of the overall control tower um set of dashboards themselves okay so it will be the visualization deliverable from ashley's the work stream that ashley is, is leading okay great thank you for clarifying that 
Shall I share my screen? Uh, are you able to see? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Got it. So um, I I would like to share the recent one I had just posted on the Tableau Public. It is not a high end, but uh, I try to explore like how how can I create a dashboard like this is a, a small replica of the past project I had done in my previous company. So uh, this is a basic dashboard of inventory management overview. So the first a column itself shows the total number of orders of the particular customer. Uh, this is for Facebook. I use the dummy data basically. So this is a uh, total number of orders and uh, total cost of these orders. The out of this order, how much licenses they had purchased. So this this is the cost of that respective licenses. And uh, this is something is not purchased as uh, maybe this is still in progress. The next chart is uh, it's a donor chart. I had tried to. No, uh, distribute the total orders across the different uh, buying programs like uh, a la carte like as a part of a la carte they had around 50 percent of the purchase from a la carte and this is dollar amount of the orders of a la carte and in tooltip i tried to integrate the uh, sub branches of the company who utilizing or who placed that order so in the bar chart we can quickly see here like this and uh, yeah this is for electronic like 0.60% uh, and uh, similarly for ELP 2.0 uh, this is something a bundled field offer where customer purchase the orders or licenses in bundled field so this is the overall distribution uh, in the next chart, I, I try to show like a tabular format, like how much licenses and how many quantities has been booked yet. Total 16,848 licenses has been purchased and this is the uh, product wise, like how, for which product, how much licenses has been purchased. And uh, in the next menu, I had uh, created the uh, cascade filters where the user can quickly uh, apply the filter across the different buying model and quickly see like uh, what is how much records behind that order basically so i will remove this uh, this is a basic uh, data of the user like if, if sales team or person from the sales team is trying to access uh, the particular records of the customer which can be used to to create a new order for customer then uh, what would be the appropriate records or data that he or she looking for uh, she can directly download it from here or can use this tablet data quickly from here bill id uh, sweet name product id and the total quantities whether line status is open or closed and uh, total uh, amount for that particular line so this is a very basic dashboard that i had tried to create it and share it are there any action filters applied I uh, have not used the action over here, but I uh, will definitely try to add them. Uh, also, it depends on the requirement, like I can integrate that part also. Okay. So, a question about the donut. Mm -hmm. So, the debate on the, okay, so the pie chart is essentially a donut chart uh, mm -hmm. with the center hollowed out. Yeah. There is a raging heated debate on to pie or not to pie or to donut or not to donut, as in, you know, is it really a valuable chart type or not? Um, so, I mean, it, it, people feel very strongly one way or the other. And I noticed that you have a donut chart here, and I looked at your pro profile, and you, I see a lot of uh, donut charts. So can you tell me about the use of your donut and uh, how you use it and why you choose to use it? And I'm assuming you like to use it yeah. because I see a lot of it, right? So can you, yeah, can you? Uh, exactly. So that, that, I'm curious. The, the reason behind the first thing is like the donut chart looks more attractive than the pie chart and it feels more interactive also uh, or if I want to add the some more information in pie chart for example uh, in the center I had mentioned the total uh, sales amount 
but on the same place if i had used the pie chart then uh, that visualization like i cannot add this total in the center of pie chart it will not look that good so that could be the one of the reason why the mo well, mostly people use the donut chart and uh, and we can quickly you know uh, interact with donut chart compared to pie chart actually pie chart looks too basic and uh, as part of visualization creativity like donut is more comfortable to me at least okay thank you um and looking at the product wise booking quantity table there mm -hmm. what does i see that you have values and i it looks like a blue and a red uh what is what do the colors mean uh actually i i tried to color uh, on quantity wise like uh, for which product the highest number of quantities are present in data itself so i put the threshold on the uh, 10k and the the number above 10k is showing into blue this is uh, the highest quantities has been purchased and the rest of the products uh, below 10k is showing is in in amber color so that's why i just uh, okay Um, thank you. Do either of you two have any questions about this dashboard? Is there a list of, I mean, I'm guessing you would put this together, it, you know, just for an example purpose, but did you, or do you have a list of like the requirements essentially that you would use to build this dashboard? Uh, actually, I collected this data actually. on my last workplace. Uh, I had similar kind of data and uh, dashboards, so I just tried to okay. create a, a lighter version of dashboard. Uh, the data that I used is totally fake; like uh, it is not a, a real data. Sure. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm just thinking in terms of like requirements and taking a you know and taking a requirement basically and displaying yeah. it here right so could you you know if we were building this out and, and treating this as an actual walkthrough of the dashboard on our side i i would think the way we would do it and, and marty kind of fill me in where i might be confusing this a little bit but basically you would pull up your list of requirements and kind of walk through it and you know walk through it on the dashboard as well right so requirement number one was xyz here's the data and kind of how it's represented in here right um, would you, you know, maybe just kind of talk through the little bit? I'm, you know, I know this might be a little bit of a strange question, but I just want to get a kind of an idea of how you would take a requirement and basically visually display it, right? So, could you like maybe walk through an example of a requirement that you would document um, to show up on a couple of your blocks here? I think particularly the one in the top right where you mentioned with the blue and having the thresholds listed, mm -hmm. right? Talk a little bit yeah. about what the requirements would be for that one. And then maybe walk through the requirements of the bottom section where you're showing each of the what looks like a, you know, probably a contract ID, a deal ID, right? And maybe list through what a couple of the requirements might be for that box as well. Exactly. It, it, it can be done, like depends on the requirement. I can add those details here also. Uh, totally based on the requirement and uh, I had done this in past where the uh, sales team or you know the sales presentative wanted to know the the, the highest quantities has been purchased by the customer for which product it is and out of that how much has been installed and how much they are currently utilizing to 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 get give them a respective credits into their account so i had done in 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 live project but it is not uh, done here like but yeah it is it is possible Okay, could you could you maybe just run through a couple examples? Uh, uh, to like, uh, it is fine with oral example. Like, I don't have the respect. Yeah, no, just yeah, talking through is perfectly fine. Yeah. Exactly. So, so the Facebook itself is like uh, the sales team wanted to know, like uh, for Facebook, they in every year they order in bulk, in huge bulk, like in millions of dollars they booked a deal. So the account manager of the Facebook from the Cisco, like Cisco is the client, it was the client for me. So 
uh, they came to us like they wanted to understand like how much licenses has been purchased by the Facebook across the different offers like the Cisco will have the different offers like offers in the sense they have huge devices and the networking licenses and the cloud licenses so what they do they had uh, made the business model where a uh, customer can purchase a huge number of devices in bulk with, with some sort of discount and with additional benefits so in this dashboard like I had shown a la carte electronic and EPL2 so uh, I changed the name but yeah this is uh, how they had divided or categorized the different offers or different tracks for the pro products that they want to sell so in a la carte like if customer doesn't have huge requirement or they are okay with the less number of devices to purchase from from Cisco so they can directly go ahead and book the a la carte order in electronics like on emergency basis or for the cloud devices if they need a license on on immediately basis so they can quickly communicate and generate the licenses on on the different platform and uh, EPL2 is something like if they have the requirement in bulk but they want some sort of discount and additional benefits if they are expecting then uh, they can go with the EPL2 orders so whenever a sales team come to us with this requirement like we need a certain data of the Facebook itself for example Facebook so we need a entire install base history of the Facebook uh, across all the offers and in last year how much licenses they had purchased uh, kindly you know, divide it in quarter wise like in each quarter how much licenses they had purchased and on the top of it in each quarter whatever they had purchased like uh, how much licenses they had utilized and how much licenses are still pending in booking state or it is been purchased but not been generated into the system and yeah like that and uh, on how much licenses has been active in different region also like Facebook is not limited to uh, any particular country or region so in all the regions like in Asia US or APJ region like how much orders are active and how much the total volume of licenses they have in each headquarter so they they give the some requirement like that so i just write the sql query here uh, i mostly interacted with the oracle database and a tor tool to write the sql query so i just consolidate all the requirement and try to write the sql query to retrieve the relevant data from the database and uh, once the data has been retrieved i use a you know, basic validation for example uh, if any order is missing or order is present but the quantity or the license list price is missing then I communicate with the different stakeholders for that respective order to fix that order basically so there are certain reasons behind the incomplete records maybe customer had uh, raised the exception or dispute on that particular order and that has been cancelled that could be the reason or maybe there are n number of reasons can happen so I just try to validate that record first because eventually whatever data I am going to share is going to make a huge change into the dollar amount right so that's why I communicate with the different stakeholders of that particular region to confirm that order is valid or invalid or and based on that decision only I made uh, necessary changes into the database also and into the ad hoc report also so that whatever report I will am going to share is accurate so once that validation part is completed then I prepare a basic basic uh, ad hoc report in Excel where all this information present in tabular format like, like name of customer and total purchase of that particular customer and all the historical information like total licenses list price quantity discount and everything so I share that with the account manager and the sales team for the confirmation purpose and once they confirm it is not a short process like they may come up with the different exception scenarios also on the existing ad hoc report so once that entire thing is fixed to fix that thing I work with the 
finance bill in some time uh, because uh, it is again associated with the dollar amount if i am adding something into the ad hoc report like uh, if i am adding uh, some orders into the ad hoc report and in past let's say customer has disputed that orders to not to include into the ad hoc report and they if they have the uh, valid business justification or approval then i again revalidate that thing with finance bu and make the respective changes into the ad hoc report so once that is confirmed with the in customer i go ahead with the creating the uh, tableau report for the same thing to create a tableau report uh, we had a, a tableau server like and uh, we create a new project for that particular customer and assign the user group of a limited user group who is associated with that deal and order and uh, after creating a basic dashboard like this into the tableau desktop i share that or i upload that to the tableau server as an extracted version and uh, i share the quick link with them so later on whenever customer face any issue in into the inventory uh they can quickly go through the report and raise a concern to fix it so this is how i had done the entire process okay thanks uh, uh sorry guys but i as i kind of mentioned i got to drop a little bit early today so i'm going to go ahead and drop off and actually thanks for uh kind of walking through this and thanks for joining again amari thanks for kind of helping out as well um i will turn it over to you guys okay thanks i like to pick it up on that question <laughs> so the goal of every dashboard is for the user to answer or get answers to their questions in the shortest amount of time the shortest amount of clicks possible right so given this example that you just uh shared with us mm-hmm. what was like the top question or top three questions to business needed answers to and uh, what kind of charts or visuals did you create to answer those questions and if there were any drill downs how did you incorporate them into the dashboard so just describe your dashboard what it looked like to, and how it worked to me please yeah so the very first thing is like they want to settle down the deal with the in customer so in, in first go the their requirement is to to convince the customer like uh, how much they do have into their account and if we have a new offer for you on on your existing purchase then uh, we will give you some sort of flexibility and discount on the new offer okay so if customer sees like uh, okay they had purchased a uh, 331 orders and they have total actual purchases of 30 million if they are okay for the new upcoming order into the new quarter if they are okay with that then they may get a 60% discount like for example the new order total price is uh, 10 million then on the 10 million they can get uh, around 60% discount or 60 or depends on the required uh, business model so if they are okay with that then they shows their interest from their end by looking at the actual data what they have with the cisco the second one is like uh, what kind of chart i used uh, i used the donut chart i used the bar chart and uh, a line chart to show the trends across the year uh, like in past year how much customer has purchased and if they are continue to purchase the same thing that they had in the next quarter or the next year then what would be the uh, what would what how can i predict that in tableau like i try to da- do that also like in terms of predictions of the next quarter if we offer them a new offer like if we are giving or deploying a new offer for in customer then uh, the total sale would be around 40 million or 35 million based on the current historic purchase and uh, in some scenarios i also use the uh, heat map and uh, uh, different chart it depends on the requirement again like so where customer can see the uh, total consumption of licenses uh, for an example uh, if if customer had purchased uh, licenses a uh, 10 different type of licenses with 100 quantity 
uh, in first quarter if they don't, don't utilize anything then uh, heat map will show the uh, color with very low brightness and let's say if they over consumed the license in within the quarter itself for example they purchase 100 but they needed 10 or 20 extra so that kind of uh, licenses or that on that date that licenses li license quantity will show up into the uh, dark color so that kind of chart also i have prepared Very okay good. how about drill downs i think mario was asking about drill downs and how do you get to um more granular levels of detail right um so i see something and then i want to click into and get more details have you like have you done things like that and if yes how do you do it uh, i had done it is in tool tip mostly uh, not so like uh, there may be different ways to do it also uh, like in each quarter if they want to see the how much licenses category wise they had purchased on on the same chart then i had integrated the tool tip where i added the sheet for that particular subcategory wise how much licenses has been purchased has been added in, into the that tool tip so for example i try to do it here if i am just hanging over here uh, just a second so here you can see i had integrated the uh, two bar charts a uh, bar chart here and this bar chart is showing the which uh, which headquarter or which branch of that customer has been purchased or ordered that particular order through that particular order so similarly i had created the chart where they can see in each quarter like what is the subcategories of products has been purchased like what is the total quantity and in sub quantities if uh, they have some unutilized license then how they can see it like i also added that part so maybe this is not on a high level of uh, drill down but uh, there may be another way to explore this thing also thank you uh, okay so i'm going to ask you to go back a step or two uh, so it just i'm a bit unclear on how you started and what this dashboard mm -hmm. looks like so okay so again the question so what would be the first question the business user would want an answer to right given that this example that you worked on this project so right and and then based on that question what type of visual did you create to answer that specific question? Can you describe yeah, yeah. that part? That's kind of like the requirement and how you met the requirement using the visual. So that's what I'm trying to understand on how you approach exactly. uh, the storytelling and the question answering. Yeah. So the business user comes with the uh, comes with the requirement. Like first requirement is like we have a customer and please give us the data. Uh, for this customer like we need data for this customer who purchased like how much licenses they had purchased in different buying programs like for example i have facebook so please give me the data of this facebook like uh, how much orders has been placed by facebook in different buying program and uh, once you are uh, giving me that data then i can conclude like in electronics in this uh, in this particular scenario in electronics buying program they had of low purchase like 0.60 percent so there is the, they try to find out if any scope to improve that parameter like that figure like how electronic buying program so, can be so okay if you are to stop there i would uh, i would quantify your answer as uh, first thing that they were looking to see is um, the answer they were looking to see is how much did this customer buy in each of these programs correct correct okay yeah I, i'd stop there yeah. right so similarly what else so after that they try to find the gap like for in electronic uh, they had a very low purchase so they try to figure out like uh, how we can give them or how how we can create a best better offer to the facebook where they can show their interest is that an answer that they will find on this dashboard or they go somewhere else and figure that out uh, they check the back in data also. Uh, okay, is, so that is not issue. relevant to. So this gives them the insight to go. Yeah. Figure out what, what what offers or what they need to do to get that to be more. Exactly. Okay, that. that so what else is so from this dashboard perspective? What else 
are the questions that um, that this dashboard provides answers to. Exactly. So uh, basically, they try to create a appropriate offer to customer. Uh, here, if you see, the Air DNA had highest purchase, and the the lowest one, uh, the 9400 series device has the this top uh, bottom three had the lowest purchase. So they can try to integrate the offer in such a way that if customer is purchasing a uh, 10 Air DNA, then as a benefit, they can they will get a uh, additional five or ten. Uh, number of licenses of of, the, of these licenses what they are not purchased so far so this is how they can increase so essentially they will use this this data uh, the, the, design the, the detailed model. data that you are showing here is used by them to formulate a plan to uh, provide offers to the customer exactly. who will uh, to increase their um, in, increase their purchases. Exactly. That's that's how I understood it. Yeah, correct. Okay, so let's pretend that you are a business user mm -hmm. using this dashboard. Mm -hmm. Can you explain to me how you would use this dashboard to get to answer your questions that this dashboard is supposed to answer? Uh, this dashboard is helping me to get a quick insight of the customer. Like I can see, they had shown interest in orders. Like they had 331 orders, but actual purchase is quite low compared to the total cost. This is the first thing, and I'll try to find out the reason behind that. The second chart is showing me they are showing a very low interest in electronic purchase. Then I will try to uh, figure out like uh, what are the different ways where they can show more interest to show no purchase electronic buying program. The third chart showing me like they are pretty interested to interested in switching and air DNA. Then how can I uh, offer or design a new order for them where they can get a, if they are purchasing air DNA or switches? Then how I can add up uh, the other licenses which are pretty low what they had purchased in past and. In the next data, like the tabular data, <coughs> I can see the uh, a quick overview of the total deal IDs, licenses, and close status. And uh, if I can find any records belongs to electronic purchase and it is closed or open, so I can work with the respective team to get that line closed before the um, end date or the quarter end date, so that the electronic purchase can be increased. So. This this uh this kind of things I can do as a business user, and yeah uh, later on that like, I I will try to create the or uh, a dashboard like in each region like how much licenses has been utilized, and I will try to figure out the region where licenses or utilization of the licenses is low, then I will try to build another model where customer can purchase or. I can sell more licenses to that particular region to increase the business. Okay, so if you were to create a visual mm -hmm. by region, what would that look like? Uh, basically, it will be in, in, in terms of maps, like a basic map where I can see uh, how much sales has been done for each region. I will try to do aggregate function like the sum of sales or sum of orders for each region and based on that I will try to figure out like what is the actual licenses has been utilized into that region and based on that so, I can take but in practical scenario I have not created the map but uh, as part of learning I, I can do these things. Okay, so if I were to ask, I am the business user, right? And you're developing this dashboard for my user, for my use. And I'm asking, I'm telling you, I need to see this data by region. What would you, what would you create for me? Uh, I will try to uh, create the sales or the sum of orders by region in the tableau, and I will use okay. the map if it is looks better. If looks better, or if it is not, then I'll continue with the uh, tabular format where I can have a choice to select a different region and respect to total orders or total licenses has been utilized for that each region. Uh, whichever better way where I, I am comfortable to explain in customer. Okay, so 
Okay, so what would you, how, what would you think, in your opinion, what is the best way? How is the best way to visualize that? Uh, as part of visualization is the map chart would be the best map chart and along with the some tabular information where the customer can or the user can quickly see the statistic of the purchase. Okay. Thank what, you. Any what, questions? Yeah, what would be your dimensions and measures in um, facts, dimensions and measures in, in, in something like that, man? Like for that example, Mari just said, right? Um, what can you define a measure? Yeah, uh, in the major, like uh, I will try to use the uh, orders or the uh, sum of orders or sales, sum of sales or the total number of licenses and as a dimension I can use the uh, region itself region or state or if I'm using map then uh, it will show the longitude and latitude in the major and dimension where I can visualize what other dimensions will you use dimension like sum of orders yeah what other uh, I understand region is a dimension but mm -hmm. what other dimensions would you use what other dimensions mm. Uh, city, region, or the uh, country, whichever is available okay. in the data. So I have a question about that. I love maps, right? I, they, I mean, I am a map geek. So um, I'm the first person to champion the use of a map. However, when it comes to a lot of visuals, when you're looking by region or by country or by city, you know, it gets really difficult. Um, the challenge is that you've got really small countries or really small cities that actually have a lot of impact on the, the whole. And that's what the challenge of using an actual map to visualize like sales and orders, right? Because first of all, it's difficult and challenging to get different two different measures onto the same map. Secondly, uh, because of the actual size, the geographic geospatial area of certain cities or certain states or even just certain countries, they may have a really, really large impact, but they're super, super tiny and you can just even barely see it on a map. Um, so how would you handle that kind of challenge? Right. So uh, there could be the option where uh, we can uh zoom in to that particular city or the country which is small in into the map uh, it is hard to see the particular country which is small in area across the globe but if we zoom in or we add up a action filter or filter where if we click on the particular city or on hand over the mouse then we can quickly zoom in to that particular region and see this could be the one of the way but later on, like it will come with the practical exposure. I will definitely check for this any alternate way to do. Maybe I can use the different chart, but it again depends upon the business model and requirement. If that is not supporting, then definitely I need to find alternate way to fix it. Okay, so let's say I want to know which countries have the lowest sales, right? Mm -hmm. And I have a map. So, and it's a global map and um, I'm assuming you have some sort of shading or some sort of indicator mm -hmm. to identify which you know a range from low to high or high to low how do I very quickly like in a second or two identify which countries are my low sales countries on a map because a map you know there are multiple states cities um, some of them are big some of them are small but you know we're talking about this dashboard and the user is supposed to be able to identify you know, answer their questions in the shortest amount of time possible how are you going to make that easy for me where i could just look and say oh these are the countries i'm interested in boom boom, boom and i could just pick them out instantly on this map uh, i can i can use the sum up cell and i can drag that to the uh, color where the the lowest intensity of the color show up the, the lowest sales on that particular region and I can it will quickly uh, highlightable into the entire map I can quickly see the darkest color is showing the highest sales and the, the, the lighter color is showing the 
or low low cell some sort of low cell and that could be the uh, easy way okay. so if you're talking about really really small geospatial locations right like singapore it's a dot on a map mm -hmm. um but they may have really really those sales and if your color scale runs for you know with the lowest it's the lightest color i'm not going to be able to see singapore because it's a dot but it has the lowest sales of all my countries right so how do you know how do you make that easy for me to identify how do you you know do you know what i'm saying i got it i got it so uh -huh. so how are you going to make that easy for me so i can look at this back and go Bam, Singapore, that is the country that I want to look into and drill down to because that is my problem country where I have the lowest number of sales and I want to do something about it, right? Because these dashboards about being able to get to that actual insight in the shortest amount of time possible. And that's how these dashboards and visuals and these drill downs should be defined and designed. So how would you do that? Uh, apart from color at the moment, I... I'm not uh, really sure like how can I achieve like am I allowed to include additional charts or only the map is yeah. sure it's, it's up to you I mean you know I'm just trying to get an idea of you know when you're posed with these questions these requirements how you approach answering it and what kind of visuals that you would design to pull everything together to make it easy for me so you can do anything you want um, I just picked the map because it sounded as if you had a preference and you first went to the map. So you can do any kind of visual that you want. I just want to be able to get to my answer, my actionable insight in the shortest amount of time possible. And I need you to help me do that by creating these visuals that make it easy for me, like instantly. So the, uh, the another best way that I found is uh, I can quickly create a sidebar chart for the all countries and I can show the uh, sum of cells as a bar chart where the... And I will arrange that into the uh, ascending order like on the top I can quickly see the countries who have the lowest sales and can quickly jump onto that particular region so okay. that could be the one of the way but uh, as far as the map concern I will definitely look for there could be a way but I will check for that that could be a challenge can you have dots that can you have dots that are that have different colors I don't know. I'm I'm not a tableau person. Can we have dots of different? Uh, yeah, it depends on the uh, the. Type. So Singapore could be could still be a dot, right? A big, mm -hmm. big green dot. I I don't know. I'm guessing. Okay. So. We can add it. It is possible. Okay. So I'm saying, I want it to be a green dot. And I want to be able to see it right after that. What would your response to that be? Uh, I will create a set, set, and I will drag that to the color where the lowest cell will show in a green. I will change the custom color and will mark it as a green, and drag that to the uh, color panel where I can see in map if the that set is eligible for or the hitting up to this Singapore area having the lowest cell. It will pop up into the sharp the green dot that would be or uh, in custom color also I can change that would you also use the size mark size mark is uh, but if I use size mark the map will be overlapped with that mark I, if I'm not wrong uh, I need it need to be adjusted so that we can quickly see because compared to the total geographic area of Singapore if you compare that area with other countries it is very small or if we use the size option over there then it, is, it will look fit I mean it will look good for other countries but for Singapore uh, the sales size is low like sum of sale is very low if we size then I don't think it will create a huge impact attractive thing but okay it is possible to do but uh, it okay. is up to the requirement and the user level understanding all right thank you so, so mari in is are there any questions we need to ask in relation to how we do tableau with, with big query or large sets of data or something like that like that we do uh, yes um actually it's on my list of questions um i just okay. haven't 
gotten to them yet. Um, but yes, now, I'm sorry, now would be a great time because we have um, just like 11 minutes. Okay, so what types of databases do you have experience working with? When, and when I say working with databases, I'm talking specifically connecting to that database with Tableau. Specifically Tableau plus database. What types of databases, how large were the databases or the data sets that you've worked with? Can you just describe your experience around that? Sure. So on my project, I, I used to work with, you know, work on a relational databases. And uh, the, one of the database I used mostly is Oracle database because uh, in Cisco, they have the pre-sale and post-sale to different databases. And, uh, Oracle one is the uh, pre-sale database that we used as, as per the project requirement. I used the Toad application as an interface tool to write the SQL query and uh, to connect with the Oracle database and to write a query to retrieve the relevant data. And uh, size of data, uh, not worked with like huge, but uh, the max to max record I worked with the 10 to 15,000 of rows I had handled in a single go. And yeah, once I wrote the query in the toad, I retrieved the data and I tried to filter out the relevant attributes in query itself. Like I just tried to type that different names of columns and retrieve the respective data only in order to get rid of the unnecessary data because later on I, whenever I connect that database to the Tableau I use the same uh, custom SQL query to fetch that table into the Tableau so that it will uh, it will load quickly compared to like if it is huge difference like if I am loading entire table into Tableau and later on filter out or hiding the columns it is much better to write a custom query and you know, call out the respective columns only to, to increase the performance also you can see okay so you connected tableau directly to oracle is that what you're saying the connecting to the oracle and then there are different databases in oracle uh, as per my access, I had limited access to data, databases into the Oracle itself. So we had access to the sales, pre-sales data. And in pre-sales, I used that database to, the, to write the query okay. in, the, in custom SQL. Okay, so it's a direct connection from Tableau to Oracle. Tableau desktop. Uh, Tableau desktop to yeah. Oracle. Yeah. Okay, and did you say that the largest data set or amount of data that you've worked with is, was around 15,000 records. So, did I hear you correctly? Yeah, 10 to 15 10, K records. Yeah. 10 to 15, okay. Okay, so have so your experience using Tableau to directly connect to databases, is, is Oracle the only one that you have experience with? Exactly. Okay. All right, and so um, even if you're using different types of data sources, um, around 15,000K is around the maximum size you've worked with in terms of bringing amount of data that you're bringing into Tableau. Okay, with that amount of records, I mean, it, I, it also depends on the number of data fields you have, but I mean, performance in general should not be an issue, right? Yeah. Okay. So um, let's say I, you know, all of a sudden one day you are required to use a data source for a dashboard that contained 8 million records. That's a lot. Yeah. How would you approach it? Uh, first, I will, uh, before loading directly that into the Tableau, I will try to understand the data in SQL. I will write the query and get a good understanding of that data, like what are different attributes are there how many records are there and I will try to, you know, after getting a basic understanding of data into the SQL itself, then I will load that data to the Tableau and whatever charts that I will create into Tableau or whatever statistics I will get into the worksheet, I will try to revalidate by writing a manual query in SQL side by side better like let's say I am doing the sum of cell and doing group by city or as an example 
and whatever figures I am getting on the Tableau worksheet is matching with my SQL uh, output or not. I will try to validate that to to handle that entire amount of data. Like this could be the one of the best way to go with accuracy. So, are you saying that you would use a custom SQL? as your data source rather than having a view or a table in Oracle, in the Oracle database to connect you? Are you saying is that your preference or your preferred way of working? Exactly. Okay. Um, do you typically tend to do a live or an extract? Uh, mostly use the extracted one. Uh, depends on the requirement, but uh, the live one I have not used yet. I, I saw like as as learning, I said it takes time to load data, but uh, in my project, uh, mostly I use the extracted version. Okay, and can you just very briefly uh, just describe your experience working with the Tableau server, publishing, refreshing, performance? Yeah. So, uh, very first thing before directly uh, creating the dashboard, I I create the a new project folder into the Tableau server and add up the uh, respective user group to that folder uh, because for each customer uh, we have different folders to, to keep the confidentiality and privacy you can say so after creating that i create my dashboard in in tableau desktop and once that is validated by our stakeholders and a business team i share that to the tableau server uh, where uh, on that particular folder basically and later on I add user group to that worksheet or, or that visualization or that folder to get a uh, interactive or you know, viewer ownership of user group and uh, for the scheduling purpose uh, this particular dashboard uh, they use to communicate with the customer so in a month uh, once in a month they had a schedule in, in scheduler i had i used to set a time on the weekend time of every month so that in every end of the month uh, that dashboard get refreshed but uh, as per my role and responsibility i have not fully worked on to the uh, server admin part because the most of my project is uh, like most of the area in my project I spend to communicate with the different stakeholders and customers and to prepare the reports but later on the once I published that dashboard to the tableau server there is another team who takes care of like it is an admin team who takes care of the you know further problems or issues with that particular thing like scheduling rescheduling or uh, or if they need to add any another users to existing dashboard or that thing. So, in Russia, like uh, 20 to 30 percent, I worked on the server side, but uh, not all because uh, because of my roles and responsibility is limited to server. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, Anup. Yeah. I I do not have anything else. Okay. Great. Um, I'm. That's just. All, that's all my questions. Thank you for your time today. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Hector. Yeah. Thank you. Anu. Thanks, Mark. Thanks. Thanks. Have a good evening. Have, bye bye. Bye bye. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Ooh.